Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss the concept of a lease from an accounting perspective. First, we need to know what is a lease. I hope we are all familiar with the concept of a lease. Maybe at some point when we were in college, we signed a rental lease, the least if we are a college student, most likely you rented an apartment or a room to live in. That's a lease. So a lease, it's an agreement used by either individual or entities to access asset. For example, you want that apartment building without fully owning them. You're not going to own it. You're just going to use it. Thus, minimizing the risk associated with ownership. Now, the reason you rent an apartment building, uh, you rent an apartment, you don't buy it as a college student is because you don't need it. There's a lot of risk in owning. First of all, you may, not, you may not afford the two. That's not your need. But for businesses, the reason they lease asset is because they don't want to own it. There's a risk in owning an asset. Maybe the asset becomes obsolete down the road. Maybe they only need it for a few years, then they don't need it anymore. So why buy it when we can lease it, use it, then move on? So in essence, it's an agreement that involves two parties. One is the lessor, and the lessor is the party that owns the asset. Now think of the lessor as the owner. So the lessor is the owner. Think of lessor employer. I'm going to tell you why I'm saying this. You have a lessor and you have a lessee. The lessee is the person that pays to use the asset for a period of time. So the lessor is the owner. If we're thinking about an apartment building, the lessor will be the landlord, the owner of the building. The lessee will be the tenant, the person that's renting the building. So if you're thinking of employer, the lessee, think of an employee. So employer, employee, lessor, lessee. So lessor is the person that owns the asset. Your employer employs you as an employee. The lessee is the one that's using the asset. So make sure don't confuse those. So we have a lessor and a lessee. And for the CPA exam, what they're doing now is they're separating how this, this information is tested. For example, the lessor is tested on a separate section than the lessee. Therefore, we're going to have a series of lectures that deal with the lessee separately and series of lectures that deals with the lessor. But if you want to just kind of summarize it, a lease is an agreement, a contract, where one party, the lessor, the owner of the asset, allows the other party, the lessee, to do what? To use the asset for a period of time in exchange for payment, with the condition that the lessee gets significant control, this is important, over the asset use and benefit from it economically. Now bear in mind, we're going to emphasize on this point shortly, that when you give control to the lessee, when the owner gives the lessee the property to use it, the lessee can use it to their own advantage, to their own economic benefit, and they can control how they use it. Otherwise, if those elements are missing, then we really don't have a lease. And this is what we're going to discuss in this session a little bit further, the criteria to have a lease. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. There are two criteria to have a lease. One is you have to have an identifiable asset with limited substitution. What does that mean? It means the lease must involve a specific asset. We have to have an asset that the lessor cannot easily replace with another. So they cannot give you this, then go back and switch it with something else. This means the asset in the lease agreement is clearly defined and distinct. And the lessor does not have the right or the freedom to substitute the asset with another one at will. You're giving me the right to use that apartment building. It's that apartment building specifically. And this ensures that the lessee get access to a particular asset that was identified in the agreement without the risk of being switched with another asset or something else without their consent. Because they relied on this asset, therefore they need this specific asset. So for a lease, we need to have an asset with 
limited substitution. It, it means it cannot be easily replaced. Now, for example, if they leased you a computer and the computer breaks, well, they can give you another computer. That's, 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 that's a substitution, but they have to give you basically similar computer or basically the same computer with the same capabilities. It doesn't mean it cannot have a substitution, but certain assets may not have substitution. So they, they really they, they, they have to come up with, um, with, with the cost of it. For example, a high-end restaurant, Gourmet Bistro, leases a custom-made state-of-the-art kitchen oven from this culinary equipment for company for two years. And this particular oven is valued at 200000 So we're dealing with an expensive oven. It's designed specifically for Gourmet Bistro's unique culinary requirement, and it's not easily replaceable. What does that mean? It means we have a unique asset. The lease stipulates that the exact oven will be used with no option for culinary, culinary equipment to substitute it with another model or make. So if something happened to that oven, maybe in the agreement, the culinary equipment company will have to come in and, uh, and fix it as soon as possible. And this ensures that Gourmet Bistro has a consistent access to this custom oven, crucial for their specialized dishes throughout the lease term because they're relying on this lease. So one, one criteria to have a lease is identifiable asset with limited substitution. The second criteria is the control over the asset. The lessee, remember what we talked about on the first slide, must have control. How the asset is used. What does control mean? Control means you can use something in any way you see fit. It means when you control it, it's going to give you benefit, economic benefit. The lessee should be able to enjoy most, if not all, the benefit from using the asset. This means any financial gains or benefit derived from the asset while they're using it, like income generation or cost savings, should be primarily to the lessee. That's why we lease the asset. It's going to give me some benefit. So control over the asset should give me economic benefit. And the other criteria within control of the asset is I can use it in any way I see fit. It's under my direction. I, 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 I decide how it's used. So the lessee should have the authority to decide how the asset is used with the terms of the lease. And this gives the lessee the autonomy, the ability to utilize the asset in the way they see fit for their needs. That's why they leased it in the first place. So you cannot tell them what they can or cannot do. So if we go back to that oven, okay? So Bistro capitalizes on the oven's unique features to enhance its menu. That's why it's so unique to them. It's going to give them economic benefit. It's going to attract more customers and increase revenue. So they are generating economic benefit. And this oven most likely leads to operational cost savings. So they're getting the benefit. So there is a benefit. Also, they can use it in any way they see fit, tailoring it, tailor it its use for their specific culinary needs and operational schedule. <laughs> so, so they can uh, raise the temperature, uh, lower the temperature any way they want to without the culinary equipment company telling them you can do this or you can do that, thereby optimizing the oven's contribution to their service revenue. So they can use it any, any way they see fit. Let's take a look at another example just to illustrate this concept. Let's assume Solar Tech Enterprises enter an agreement with Green Tech Solution. Solar agrees to provide Green Tech with solar panel system valued at 100000 to be installed on their office buildings for a period of 10 years. Great. While Solar retain ownership of the panel and has the option to replace them with similar system if necessary for maintenance or upgrades, so for example, if they have a better system, they, they have the right to go in and replace them. Green Tech, the lessee, has the exclusive right to use the, the solar system. So notice here, it's a limited substitution. They can come in and swap out the old solar system with a new one, or they can come in if it's not working properly and replace this piece with another piece. That's fine, that's limited substitution. However, green tech, they should be able to generate whatever they're trying to do, generate benefit from this solar system, whether to reduce their cost or provide service, whatever that, whatever their reason is. So notice this, this agreement meet a specific asset criteria. The agreement specified the asset involved, which is the solar panel system installed on green tech premises. The system is identifiable and distinct from other asset that solar system might own. Again, they might have limited substitution for it in case something broke down. Otherwise, we can assume it's unique. Again, let's talk about the limited substitution. Although they can replace the solar panel system, 
This right is limited to situation that may require maintenance or upgrading of the system. So the primary intent is not to alter the, the main idea of the, the essence of the asset being leased, but to ensure it's working properly and continuously. And that's why we have here a limited substitution. Control and economic benefit to the lessee. Yes, green tag gains control over the solar panel when it's installed there in terms of, of it use for generating solar energy. It also enjoyed the economic benefit derived from using the system, such as cost saving on electricity and potential incentives for using renewable energy. Also, Green Tech directed the use of the solar panel system as they decide how to utilize it in generating energy for its operation. So if you notice this example, the lease allows Green Tech to leverage the advantage of the solar energy without substantial upfront costs. So it's, it's, it's a lease, while Solar Tech maintains ownership and the right to ensure the system is working properly, optimal performance th by through potential replacement or constant update. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. What constitute control over a leased asset and a leased agreement? Now, what are we concerned with when we have a lease? Remember, in a lease, we have a lessor and we have a lessee. Now we have to keep in mind when we when we discuss control, we're looking at the lessee. Does the lessee have control? The lessee have to have control over the asset in order to enjoy it. So, a would the lessor right to inspect the asset at any time would that constitute control over a leased asset? No, the lessor can inspect the 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 asset that's being leased. For example, if you lease a car from a car dealership. They have the right to inspect this car on regular interval. They will say, if every six months, you want, we want you to bring the car, we want to look at it, make sure everything's working properly. So that doesn't that doesn't constitute control over the lease. You, the, the lessee still have control. So the lessor right to inspect the asset does not give them the right of control. The lessee's ability to obtain economic benefit and the direct the use of the leased asset, would that constitute control for a lessee? And the answer is yes. What does that mean? It means the lessee, they obtain, they can generate economic benefit, economic, economic benefit, some sort of a revenue, some sort of income from the asset. They, they can do that. If they can do that and they can direct the use of it, they can use this asset in any way they see fit to generate the economic benefit. Therefore, they have control over the asset. Therefore, what constitute control? It's for the lessee. It's the ability to obtain economic benefit. I would say B is a good answer. The lessee's ability to terminate the lease agreement at any time, uh, that's that's between the lessor and the lessee in the lease agreement. But when the lessee is using the asset, what constitute control is economic benefit and by direct use. So C is out. The lessee's obligation to maintain and ensure the asset. That does not constitute control. Even if the lessee uh, will... They, they, they are going to maintain the asset because they need to use it and most likely they're going to insure the asset but that does not give them control what give them control if they can obtain economic benefit and direct the use means they can use it in any way they see fit for their own business for their own custom need therefore the answer is b what should you do now you want to go to farhat lectures look at additional resources mcqs that's going to help you study for the cpa exam study for your accounting courses, study for your professional certification, invest in yourself. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.